Your gut feeling is hardwired. A new Duke University study has found a new neuron circuit that proves the gut has a more direct connection to the brain than previously thought. Enteroendocrine cells that line the gut have protrusions similar to neurons, leading researchers to suspect they may be sending signals to the brain via the vagus nerve. When a fluorescent green rabies virus was injected into the colons of mice, the virus labeled the vagus nerve before landing in the brainstem, proving there was a direct circuit. Enteroendocrine cells grow in the same petri dish as vagal neurons connected together and begin firing signals. The cells release the neurotransmitter glutamate, involved in conveying senses like taste or smell, which the neurons picked up on within 100 milliseconds. The findings could have massive implications on our understanding of appetite and how to suppress it. Current suppressants target slow-acting hormones, but going after the synapses may in fact be the more effective approach. How well do you know your body? Cryonics could give people a second chance at life. A landmark British court ruling that a 14-year-old girl who died of cancer should have her body cryogenically frozen has once again put the spotlight on the controversial process known as cryonics. Cryonics is a procedure that preserves the human body at low temperatures after death in the hope it can be revived in the future. The process must begin within two minutes of a person being declared legally dead. Although the heart has stopped beating, there is still some brain function during this period. So a heart-lung resuscitator is used to stabilize the body and keep the brain supplied with blood and oxygen. In the next step of the process, an anticoagulant is injected into the body to stop the blood clotting during transit. The body is then packed in ice and transported to a cryonics facility. Once there, a process called vitrification begins, where the blood is replaced with a cryoprotectant antifreeze fluid. This is done to prevent the cells from freezing and to stop ice crystals from forming around the organs at extremely low temperatures. The body is then placed on a bed of dry ice until it cools to minus 130 degrees Celsius. Once cooled sufficiently, the body is transferred to an individual container, which is in turn lowered into a larger metal tank that's filled with liquid nitrogen to keep the temperature at minus 196 degrees Celsius. Between four and six bodies are typically held in the tanks. They are stored with heads facing down to ensure the brains would stay immersed in the freezing liquid, even if there is a leak in the container. Britain's High Court ruled in October that a 14-year-old girl had the right to be cryogenically frozen after her parents disagreed about whether she should undergo the process. Before she died, the girl wrote to the court to say she wanted the chance to live again, even if it took 200 years for scientists to wake her up. Around 350 people have been cryogenically frozen since the 1960s, including several notable scientists and the baseball legend Ted Williams. However, the technology to revive someone who's been cryogenically frozen does not exist, and there is no proof that it ever will. Can the human body survive traveling to Mars? In a recent opinion article, U.S. President Barack Obama stressed his goal of not only sending humans to Mars, but making it possible for people to stay there for extended periods of time by 2030. But the journey alone won't be an easy one. Scientists say one of the dangers of traveling to Mars is exposure to radiation. Without the protection of Earth's atmosphere, humans are vulnerable to the sun's gamma rays and hot neutrons, which can cause cancer. A shield made of lead or water, especially in the form of ice, could be used to absorb the radiation and protect the human body. Spending less time in space could also reduce the effects of radiation. During space travel, humans are also prone to osteoporosis. Astronauts in space have been recorded losing 1 to 2 percent of bone mass per month. That could mean 10 to 25 percent of skeletal mass being lost during a year-long round trip to Mars. While exercise aboard spacecrafts may help humans retain muscle and bone mass, astronauts have still been recorded losing a significant amount during travel. Other effects of space travel on the human body include changes in the circulatory system and the immune system. Meanwhile, even after humans do make it to Mars, they will still need to battle significantly lower temperatures and a thin and low-pressure atmosphere. Body's bad fat could be altered to fight obesity. Want to not be fat and not do anything but pop a pill to be skinny like a true American? 
The majority of fat in the body is unhealthy white tissue found around the waist, hips, and thighs. Smaller amounts of brown fat located around the neck and shoulders are packed with mitochondria that generate heat when burning up excess calories. Scientists have found a way to turn white fat in lab mice into beige fat, a healthier fat with some weight loss capabilities by blocking the PEXRAP protein. The next step is to find a safe way to block the PEXRAP protein in humans. Researchers hope to develop more effective treatments for obesity and diabetes, both of which continue to ravage the United States. Swedish firm can 3D print body parts. Forget about plastic surgery, say hello to 3D bioprinting. Swedish startup firm Cellink specializes in low-cost and accessible 3D bioprinting by offering bio-ink as well as 3D bioprinters. Cellink is currently focused on growing cartilage and skin cells for drug and cosmetics testing. The company makes its bio-ink, the liquid that human cells are mixed with, with cellulose from Swedish forests and alginate formed from Norwegian sea seaweed. Cell-link bio-inks run between $9 to $299, while the printers cost between $10,000 and $39,000. Health experts believe that in 10 to 20 years, bioprinting could be used to make fully functioning organs for transplant. Human organs grown in animals? Scientists have created human-sheep hybrids in hopes of one day growing human organs in animals. Researchers in California are working on reducing organ transplant rejections by using sheep and pig embryos to grow human organs. Scientists introduce adult stem cells into early-stage sheep embryos and then return them to the sheep to grow for three more weeks. They achieved sheep embryos where one in every 10,000 cells was human. In the U.S. last year, 34,770 organ transplants were performed, while 115,035 people are currently waiting for a transplant. Around 20 people die daily waiting for transplants. The research is still in its preliminary stages, but the scientists are optimistic that humans will one day receive organs grown in animals. Hot, humid weather prevents body from cooling down. With 17 states in the eastern U.S. under heat advisories, the hot temperatures along with the high humidity could be a health concern for some. When temperatures are high and the air is humid, the mechanisms the body has to cool down are not as effective. When the outside temperature is cooler, heat leaves the body. But when outside temperatures are higher, heat doesn't escape as well. In high humidity, the air is full of moisture, so sweat takes longer to evaporate. As the body tries to cool down, blood is sent to the surface of the skin in order to radiate off heat. This pulls water out of the bloodstream and puts them into the sweat glands. Less blood is available to transport oxygen to the brain and other internal organs. Circulation is encumbered, meanwhile the blood has less water. If those conditions maintain and fluids are not replenished, there is a risk of heat exhaustion. If someone appears to be confused or starts to show other neurological symptoms, that's a sign of a heat stroke. Young children and older people are at higher risk of heat-related illnesses. It's important to stay properly hydrated in hot, humid weather. Wear loose-fitting and lightweight clothing. If possible, avoid direct sunlight. Avoid alcoholic and decaffeinated drinks as well, which are dehydrating.